Hello and welcome today, everyone. I just want to ask, first of all, before we proceed, if everybody, everyone can hear me? If yes, if you can uh, type yes into the chat. And also, um, if you can see the slide presentation, like the, yep, yes, yes. Okay, perfect. So everyone can hear me, awesome. So should we give it another like, minute to get, no? Okay, so we're gonna, Oh, okay, so we're going to start the presentation, but I just want to say, uh, first of all, thank you for being here today uh, at this webinar, and thank you for um, spending this time today with me. Uh, I know I missed this um, time we're dealing with right now. Um, it's a difficult situation, but uh, we can all unite together in the same industry and, and be able to fight this and uh, go back to our salons and spas um, uh, knowing the proper protections we can take, right? Um, so Angela, if you can't hear me, you can't hear me. Uh, let me see if I can um, text it, type it. Uh, Angela, oh, she can't hear me. Oh, you cannot send message. Oh. Ask your turn. Unmute, unmute. Oh, got it. Perfect, Angela. Thank you. I was just sending you a text. Okay, perfect. Okay. So, yeah, so we just want, with this webinar today, it was just a little bit of a, an educational, um, hi, Vera, um, an educational webinar just to see what's going on, you know, with the uh, COVID-19 and what can we do with our salons, how to protect our salons. We know right now that due to uh, non-essential work being closed down, um, we're, we're not at our spas or salons, but what can we do from now to prepare ourselves so that when we do start going back to our, our work, places and how to uh, have our customers to be um, also at ease coming in even after uh, COVID-19, right? Because we're always will be dealing with viruses in our life. Uh, so what can we do to avoid any uh, pandemic like this? Okay, so we will go through the slide and I'm going to go through the first slide. Here's something really simple of what we know about the COVID-19, okay? So we do know that it cannot be handled or cured with antibiotics. Um, it attacks the respiratory system. People most at danger with this virus are people who smoke, vape, have respir respiratory problems, and those who are uh, chronologically advanced in age or are elderly ones. Um, those, when it says with respiratory system, is people who have asthma, um, any underlying health conditions or chronic conditions like high blood pressure, kidney disease, cancer, or diabetes, these all can play a, a role. Like these people are much more in danger. Uh, for children, there really hasn't, uh, no young child as of yet has died from the virus in China. So um, they, they don't appear to get sick from it, but they can be carriers of it. So even children at home, now that the kids are all at home with their parents, they need to be practicing proper um, hand washing techniques as well uh, to get that, um, to be control the, the virus as well, okay? So uh, the incubation period is thought to be between 14 to 28 days. Uh, someone can pass it on without displaying any symptoms. Some people can go through nine days and not knowing that because they have no symptoms, knowing that they have it and can transfer it. Um, it lives on the surface for up to nine days, which is really important for us. That's why this webinar is basically focused on our surfaces uh, and our salons and spas and what can we do. So it can live on the surface for nine days. So if we're not practicing proper infection control and cleaning and disinfecting and using the proper um, disinfectants with the proper claims, the proper contact time, what are we doing with that um, virus or that pathogen that's sitting on the surface for up to nine days, okay? Uh, the virus enters us through our face, uh, through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. So these droplets can land in the mouths or nose of people who are nearby or possibly even be inhaled into the lungs, okay? So our next, hi Debbie. Uh, glad you can make it. No worries. Thank you for being here. Uh, hopefully you didn't miss too much. We just started on the first slide with these little uh, bu uh, bullet points of what we know about uh, COVID-19, uh, okay? So now when we go to our next uh, slide, uh, 
this is just something I just took out of um, the website just for us to know to see um, what the statistics are. It's good to see that as well. Can you close the door? Okay, thank you. Um, this is as of March 26. So as even as of today, these statistics have changed dramatically, I guess I can say, because, um, you know, in Ontario, we have about 858 numbers of confirmed cases. Number of deaths was 15 as of 26. When I checked on the 28th, it was um, it was 18. Hi, Emma. I know I didn't put all of them. I just cut it in half just to give a suggestion. But I put the link at the bottom. If in the red, both Chris and Emma, if you see the link at the bottom, you can get all the provinces. Okay. I just didn't want to um, overwhelm the page. Uh, but at the bottom, see where it says total confirmed cases is 4,018, number of deaths 39. But this has changed. Every day you have to go and check this um, um, website out because I checked on the 26th and today when we checked, there's about 22 deaths in Ontario. OK, so I just wanted to put it there just to show that there is a severity with this. Like we have to understand the import, the the emergency of this virus and how to control it and how to um, not be spreader spreading it. You know, we are told to stay at home. Uh, all non-essential workplace has been shut down. You know, let's let's practice a social distancing so that we can um, get over from this to, uh, and then go back to work, right? Because a lot of our economy will suffer. Our, your own businesses are going to take a, a hit, right? So we want to be able to get back and pick everything up, okay? So I kept, kept some of these brief statistics. So we are seeing the impact of COVID-19 is having on travel. We can't tr uh, be able to travel. It's not essential travel, so we have to stay put. Uh, schools, I heard, I don't know if I didn't wasn't able to watch news at 1 p.m., but uh, apparently they are suggesting that all the schools will cl cl stay closed down until the new year, so until September, uh, which is a great impact also on, on parents, right? Having to now be taking care full time, their children at home. Um, so gyms are closed, movie theaters are closed, restaurants, and yes, even our spas and salons, right? We have to, they're not essential. So we had to um, shut down and uh, not practice any of our, of our services, right? So let's just go to the next slide. Give me one second. It's too loud. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so this is just some other information uh, that I want to put in there. So there are about 200,000 beauty professionals in Canada, and it is important because we're so many for us to understand these facts that we that I have been able to portray here in this presentation or what you'll be reading on, on um, uh, Health Canada or WHO, World Health Organization or CDC. Um, the, the, this current situation is an important is an opportunity, sorry, for us to continue to support and educate all in the beauty industry. So whatever you learn from today, if it's something new you learned, um, is it something that you can share to your fellow um, beauty professionals, right? Uh, is it something that you can bring back to your salon or to your owner or to whichever, right? This information we want to continue educating people with. Uh, as an industry that prides itself on making clients look and feel their best, but also come into direct contact with the public, we want to make sure our clients feel at ease, our businesses do not suffer, and most importantly, employees and guests alike remain healthy and safe. So even though now non-essential businesses are shut down, this information is shaping, it's molding our minds as beauty professionals on how we should always think when it comes to infection control and the high importance of it. And as well, to make it a habit that proper protocols in the personal service setting are always performed without a second thought. We should never have to think twice about needing to clean, disinfect, washing our hands. This is not, not second nature, it's a must. It should be done all the time, okay? By this, we can help our business to gradually pick up after the hit the economy will have. So this will benefit you as well if you're a salon owner or um, a business owner, okay? Um, let me just change the slide. Sorry about that. Okay, so 
the best form of protection is education, just like we're doing today and just like you might see so many other webinars happening and these Zoom meetings happening. Uh, it's education. It's a good time right now to get this, uh, this education out. So knowing how to identify the risks and coming up with the proper action is the key to preventing pathogens from spreading to you and your clients. So four helpful practices to keep in mind is what we're going to look at right now. So the first practice, if we switch the slide here, is wash your hands. We hear that 20 24 seven since this whole pandemic has happened, how we need to um, be constantly washing your hands. They spread by touching, viruses spread by touching contaminated surfaces and then touching your own mouth, nose, or possibly your eyes. So now we can see the importance of why we always have to keep on washing our hands. It's, it's we constantly will be touching our face and now we have to be mindful of that. Um, Washing your hands is the best line of defense and an activity that should be repeated as often as possible throughout the course of the day and after every treatment or client interaction. So so um, it's, I guess you can say, uh, washing your hands is the best antibiotic at the moment, right, to help control this uh, virus. Uh, be sure to know the proper techniques using soap and thorough scrubbing action for at least 20 seconds. Or if you watch, I have a video here, but if you were to go to this link below, which I will provide, I have a, a slide at the end with all the links, but if you go to this link, you can watch this, um, this uh, how to wash your hands. Sometimes we miss important steps, sadly, in how to properly wash our hands. Um, if I show you the next slide, I'll tell you what I mean when it comes to washing hands. This is a, uh, I use them a lot of my trainings that I do at schools, beauty schools. Uh, when it says the color, it's color coordinated and most often miss those red spots. Um, and then even the thumb. And I actually went home and did this practice at home myself and did notice that every time, and I looked at my hands carefully and when I was washing, I was missing my, my thumb. And how many times do we take the time to focus on our, fingertips we're mostly focusing on our palms you know on our top of our hands the inside of our palm but never do we focus on our fingertips and sometimes when we're cleaning our thumbs stick out so I noticed this and now I'm being more conscious more just by this image to to make sure I cover all crevices all parts of my hands and wrist um, you might see a lot of videos out there on social media people using some kind of tint and with their gloves on, rubber gloves on, they spread the tint all over their hands by showing proper um, techniques of washing your hand. And you can see where the tint has uh, stained the gloves, then you know you can see where you have missed. So this is a really nice teaching aid as well. Um, so as much as you can, use soap and water, okay? If soap and water is not visible, like it's not uh, around you, it's not accessible, and you have to use your 60% alcohol-based hand rubs, um, just make sure that organic matter or soil, if it's on the hands, if the hands are heavily soiled, um, the the sanitizer won't sadly won't do anything. Okay, uh, just give me one second. There's a question. Do you recommend clients use a nail brush for under nails? Um, sure. Yes. Uh, it's having a nail brush by the sink and brushing your nails with it is awesome. Just that that tool. On the other hand, because the bristles are porous. You can't really disinfect that. So it might not be a great idea at the moment now with everything that's going on or if they don't mind throwing that away and getting another one, right? But doing the actions that they show in the video with the finger with the fingertips, you're almost doing like a squeezing the lemon kind of thing in your palm with your fingertips. This will be just as effective than using uh, having a scrubber, like another a tool, okay? Uh, I just don't think it would be great at the moment now with it not being able to be disinfected. Okay. I hope that answered your question, Chris. Um, so what I was saying about if your hands are visibly soiled, uh, you got to use soap and water before you cannot uh, just go straight to the um, hand sanitizer. Because what will happen is that the hand sanitizer will become um, inactivated, it won't work as well it won't be as effective, because the soil is inactivating the hand sanitizer. Okay, so you won't get that effectiveness. So it's an in betweener. Your, your your hand hand sanitizer, but as much as you can you can uh, clean your hands with soap and water, please do that. Also, um, if you're using gloves, when you go back to work and you're using gloves in the service, doesn't mean that this replaces walk, washing your hands. You should still be washing your hands after you remove those gloves and when you wear new ones afterwards for your next service. Okay, 
So let's go to the next slide, which is step number two, which is always disinfect your surfaces and your equipment. So after every client appointment, you should disinfect your workstations, treatment areas, and client touch points, which include chairs, beds, face cradles, door handles, counters, the list goes on. Follow the label direction of the disinfectant wipes or sprays that you're using because you want to ensure you're allowing the sufficient contact time to kill the germs. So we know everybody is this, it's in the beauty field that's using any disinfectant, but it's using preempt as well, that contact time plays an important role because to disinfect. Um, solution must remain wet on the surface for the entire contact time as per label use instruction. If you remove it before the contact time, so for example, our TB, which is going to be what we're using now to fight this virus and for all our surfaces, if you apply it and don't leave the surface saturated for three minutes, you and you remove it before, wipe it off before it, you will not have achieved that the virucidal claim, the bactericidal claim, the fungicidal claim, any of those claims that says it, ki it kills in three minutes, you will not have achieved that. So you defeat the purpose. So please, contact time is so important. And the nice thing about uh, preempt is the contact time is only three minutes for RTU, as opposed to if you're going to use alcohol, that's a 10 minute contact time. Long time. And another thing is that some of these Disinfectants, they evaporate before the contact time is over. So you need to reapply during this disinfection process. For example, our 60% alcohol. It's good to use. You can. It can kill the virus. But it doesn't have, first of all, cleaning capabilities as our preempt does. Remember, to disinfect, it's a two-step. You have to clean first. And then you have to use a disinfectant. So alcohol doesn't have cleaning capabilities. So you have to buy another product to clean the surface wipe it and then use the alcohol but also alcohol uh, evaporates pretty quickly we have a video that i use in the training that in 17 seconds the alcohol the 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 table whatever the, the table that we're using the surface in 17 seconds parts and corners of the table it evaporated and remember alcohol is 10 minutes contact time so you have to sit there during that 10 minutes and reapply and reapply and reapply because it's evaporating so quickly so that might not be very useful for you especially when you go back to to work right you don't have time with a high turnover of, of clients you don't have time to sit there for 10 minutes so to kill all those pathogens so preempt rt with the three minutes and it works as a cleaner as well it's got surfactants in it that works as a cleaner it makes your job your life easier okay so let's go to the next step that we can follow which is avoid you harsh chemicals so during this pandemic salons and spas they're going to resort they may resort to using harsh disinfectants in a bid to kill pathogens uh, be careful with that. It doesn't necessarily mean it's the right thing to do. You should be familiar with the precautionary language associated with these products so that you're ensuring that you're not being exposed to unintended side effects, which includes skin irritation, respiratory issues, which you can also um, get occupational asthma from a lot of these harsh chemicals that you're using every day at work to disinfect, which with preempt, you don't have that issue, or necessitate special storage and handling um, consideration, which means you got to wear gloves, you got to wear goggles, got to wear an apron. While preempt RTU is powerful, it is safe for you and your staff. It is uh, because it's odor free not irritating to the eyes and skin and the active ingredient will break down into oxygen and water which means that uh we're not damaging even the aquatic life right we're we're uh, being mindful of that uh the preempt line of disinfectants they have a broad spectrum virucidal efficacy and can be used against 2019 uh and the covid uh, COVID-19 uh, COVID on hard, non-porous surfaces and equipment, but you must follow the, uh, the label directions properly, okay? So let's go to the last point that's going to help with your uh, salons and spas is share knowledge. While there may be some clients that they're going to stay away from your salon or spa, during this outbreak but we're on um shutdown at the moment but some even when you get back to work some will still not want to come they'll be maybe a little bit iffy or maybe a little bit like oh what is a salon doing that's going to take care of my my safety my health right so let your clients know from now 
even on social media, on your platforms, like your websites, let your customers know what you're doing now and what you're going to be doing still when your business resume, resumes. When you go back to, to work, show your client what you're using. Have the disinfectants visible in your salon so that they can see it and see what you're using and use it in front of them. Let them see the action that you're taking uh, and this will make them feel much comfortable and they will uh, continue to come. They'll, they'll, they'll be at ease to come once your business picks up because we're going to need our customers to come back to after the hit that our, our, our businesses took. We want our customers to come back uh, immediately, right? and book in their appointments. So following these four practices that we just mentioned and having the knowledge you're doing things right will help you and your clients stay safe from germs, from any pathogens, and from any of the spread of these infections. And it's not just good for you, but it's also good for your business, okay? So the next slide is just another, that's another couple of tidbits to know about, um, you know, staying away six feet, six feet from the people we're um, interacting with, uh, wearing a mask. Even when you go back to work, wearing the mask is going to protect your your customers. It doesn't protect you from getting any of the viruses, but it will protect you from spreading it to your customers if you're sick or if you're not feeling well. Uh, but it keeps that safety. Um, a nice quote from Dr. Sawyer that was cited in the Washington Post. If you look at the fourth bullet uh, not touching your facial mucous membrane an area known as a t-zone is perhaps the most important step you can take to prevent an infection so very very true it's the one behavior that would be better than any vaccine ever created so just stop this simple behavior stop picking licking biting rubbing it's the most effective way to prevent the pandemic now it's kind of hard Sometimes we do feel itch coming or we got to touch your face um, if you feel the urge to do that have um, tissues around, use a tissue to touch your face and then discard that tissue. Okay, because as the little statistic here, the average person touches their face about three times an hour and a surface more than three times an hour. So it's a habit and we need to break it. And wearing gloves too can help that too. But uh, when you look at your hands, you're wearing gloves, you're like, oh shoot, I shouldn't be touching my face with, my, with gloves on, right? So maybe that can also get your mind frame into place. Um, and also taking these guidelines even at home. So it's good to also clean and disinfect our homes to remove germs. So practice these routines, cleaning frequently touched surfaces like your tables, your doorknobs, your light switches, your handles, your desks, your toilets, your faucets, your sinks, your cell phones. Uh, there's so much we could be uh, cleaning even practicing disinfection at home as well. Okay. Uh, the next slide um, is something that Oh, even um, on this slide down here at the bottom, you can see a video. Once again, it's from that link that I posted above. It shows even how to use hand rubs properly because unfortunately people do not use hand rubs properly. Watch these videos. They're just a good reminder. Not saying that we don't know how to use hand rubs, but it's a good reminder. Um, and these are videos that could also be played in your salon and spa when you come when you resume back, right? And having accessible uh, uh, around your, your salon and spa uh, hand sanitizers, okay? So the next slide, uh, I, I want to post this in here because every Friday, uh, Virox, the manufacturer, they, uh, Nicole, that's her name, she has this Talk To Me Clean blog and every time there's a new article that comes out every Friday. And now in the light of uh, COVID-19, she uh, does a bunch of these blogs Concerning that, even when St. Patrick's Day was what you got to do when it comes to uh, being around with people or staying away from people and what you know, what you could do and still have a good time, right? But her, if you read this uh, article, so if you follow Talk To Me Clean uh, blog by Nicole, just Google it on, um, I put the blog, as, I put the link as well at the last page. You're gonna get some good information because they do cater as well, she does cater as well to the salons and spas information too, okay? So I just wanted to post it in there because I found some really good uh, information, okay? Um, the next slide now is that we're going into the preamp family, okay? So the preamp, uh, we're going into the product. Specifically, we're going to focus today on RTU because we're talking about surfaces, right? Uh, we can do other webinars on your, your tools and stuff like that, but for now it's your surface because this is what's going to help kill the uh, virus. Uh, so AHP is the um, ingredient that we call accelerated hydrogen peroxide. And this AHP is a globally patented blend of surfactants. That's why it works as a cleaner that when combined with hydrogen peroxide results in a superior disinfecting and cleaning performance while it remains gentle on users and the planet. 
Okay, so that is the active ingredient, accelerated hydrogen peroxide. And let's move on to this little slide here. So with the ongoing COVID-19 outbreak, it's important to note the history of AHP, accelerated hydrogen peroxide, and its acceptance during the SARS uh, coronavirus outbreak. So it was used. So when SARS uh, came, arrived in Canada in 2003, accelerated hydrogen peroxide became the recommended disinfectant technology of choice and the only disinfectant used by healthcare providers across Canada. So this... Um, you know, you're at ease to know that this ingredient, the AHP that you're using with preamp, it's powerful enough to kill the COVID-19, but also gentle enough to use it on your surfaces and to on your if it touches your skin, your breathing, your lungs. It's good to know that there's a product out there that can do all of that. And this little article out here talked about that, talked about the breakout, the breakout of SARS. So once again, this article will be at the end of the slides in links, but I also will have an email at the end of this uh, presentation, that if you need any of these marketing material, do not hesitate to email me and I can send them. Because these are stuff you might even want to display in your salon and spa that customers can read and be like, wow, they are you know, taking this, uh, this um, pandemic that we had because this would be over with, we'd be back at work, and what they're, what they're still um, following in the uh, proper protocols in the salon, okay? Uh, the next, slide once again is talking about the preem family uh safe for you safe for the planet tough on germs designed for use on surfaces and spa, salons and spa but what makes preempt rtu wonderful is that it is a one-step disinfectant cleaner so it is both a cleaner and disinfectant it has a mixture of surfactants that make it work as a cleaner Okay, so uh, when, as we know, when it comes to disinfecting, it's a two-step process. You always have to clean first and disinfect afterwards. Uh, you know, your tools as well, before you put them in the disinfectant, the chemosterilant or the high-level disinfectant, you are cleaning them with soap and water first. But the RTU, because it has some of these surfactants in it, it's going to give you only one step to do. So you can clean and disinfect with this uh, solution. But if the surface is heavily soiled, wipe that down first, remove all that soil because it can inactivate the surfactant in the preempt RTU. So be mindful of that, okay? Um, many products on the market work solely as a disinfectant with either non or poor cleaning abilities. So as I mentioned, you need to use two different separate products. So look at that too, look out for that as well. You don't want to have two different products. You want to have one product that does it all. You want to have a one-step disinfectant cleaner. And this our RTU has been tested in a soil load and it does maintain its ability to kill pathogens, which is awesome what we need right now, okay? Um, next slide just shows, uh, let me just get this going. Give me one second, uh, hard, hard jot. Uh, yes, email me at the end when I give you that, when you see that email, and then we can send you the marketing material. It'll be at the end of the slide. We're almost there that you can see. Here's a checklist of areas that you can use your, the preempt RTU, okay? Uh, once again, this presentation can be um, sent to you as well uh, to, to have all these um, visuals, okay? Uh, how to use it. Very, very, very easy. Doesn't take long. Contact time is three minutes. So you're going to remove any dirt and debris from the surface. Surface, because remember, if it's heavily soiled, it won't be as effective. Okay. Then you're going to spray thoroughly the surface, make it wet, and then you're going to have to leave your contact time of three minutes. Nothing less. Nothing more. It, it will evaporate eventually, but in that three minutes, it's going to stay wet. Okay. Allow the surface to air dry or wipe excess solution from surface with a clean cloth after three minutes. Do not use the same cloth that you had used to wipe the debris at the beginning. Okay. Um, make sure it's a brand new uh, paper towel. Here's the four pillars of strength. I really love using this. This is a nice marketing um, uh, tool you can use as well in your salon. Uh, what's in your disinfectant? You know, you want to know. Disinfectants are easy to develop, but they are often quite toxic. You know, we have bleach that's, that causes occupational asthma. But preempt is different. It's powerful but safe. Um, so now we know that there's an alternative to the harsh disinfectants you may be using in your salon. So isn't it time, don't you think it might be time that if you are using something harsh, um, 
it's good to make that switch to something better, okay? It's eco-friendly, doesn't mean you have to compromise on speed or effectiveness, uh, being eco-friendly. In the three minutes, it's still gonna do what it has to do. Uh, Pre-amp disinfectant, and uh, disinfect as quick as in three minutes. And safer for you, non-toxic, safer for the planet. Uh, they are compliant, so you can proudly display your product knowing you are demonstrating the high level of practices and disinfection standards in your salon and spa. So if a health inspector comes in, they know that you're practicing proper uh, protocols. Um, okay, uh, yes, so you can have a copy. After this webinar is over, a link will be uh, mail to uh, email to you with this presentation to rewatch rewatch it again. Just if you're going to uh, if you leave um, emails on this chat, I won't be able to get them. So please, at the end, send me an email on the email that you'll see uh, at the end of this presentation. Okay. Uh, somebody asked a question about rags. Sorry, let me just go up. Um, Natasha, how do you go up? Uh, there was a question. Oh, two fingers. Oh. Just one. Uh, would you would you use would you use a rag throughout the day? New every time. So rags are not. I when I teach, I don't really um, suggest rags using rags because it's been soiled already. It's been actually now with the virus and stuff. You want to always have a brand new paper towel. So same with in in the salon stuff. We always suggest using paper towel, not a rag. So when you're doing your cleaning, if you're gonna um, do your cleaning stage and then wipe it down with the paper towel. That paper towel gets thrown away, and then after when you spray the disinfectant, you need a new paper towel just to, to wipe around any wet wetness after three minutes. Do not use the same paper towel. So I'm not a big um, uh, advocate for for rags. So I hope that answers your your question. Um, sorry, once again, don't don't leave your emails here because I won't be able to access them uh, after this presentation. Just wait till the end to get the email, to send it me your emails, to send me your messages. I'll, I'll remind you guys at the end. Okay, so the next slide, Eco Logo. So this product is certified for reduced environmental impact. You know, we want to take care of our, uh, apart from all this pandemic going on, we want to also be mindful of our environment. It's our home that we live in, okay? Um, this little chemistry report card, I, like, I put it in here, which is nice to see. If you're trying to choose a disinfectant out there, what do you have to look out for? So not here saying you have to have to have to use preamp. Here, do your research. See what product, what disinfectant might be good for you. So, you know, it has chlorine, quats, phenols, alcohols, and then ours, accelerated um, preamp, accelerated hydrogen peroxide, the ingredient. So uh, then on the side, on the left side, says speed of disinfectant, spectrum of kill, cleaning effectiveness, safety profile, environmental profile. And when you look across the stars, obviously the more stars there are, the better the product is. And when you go at the end of this chart, you see that accelerated hydrogen peroxide, that technology is what's great and what you would want to have in your salon. So do your research yourself as well, so you can see um, what would be the greater choice, okay? Here, this is all the links. Once again, this is going to be sent to you after the, the, the recording, this is gonna be sent to you after this webinar. So don't worry if you didn't get these links right now, you will have them accessible. Um, this, so if you are looking for other marketing material, especially this is coming from World Health Organization. So this is actually posters they created. Uh, I went just to the, I went to the um, website and it's in the links that I provided above and I printed this out and you can print it as well. You can download it, it's a PDF, print it, put it in your salon. It's good uh, to show the steps that you're taking, the steps that your client should be taking to, your employees. So this is a nice marketing uh, material that you might want to download as well to have um, along with maybe another poster of the, or another marketing image of preempt of what you're using, right? Uh, then here we are in the last, uh, uh, page where is the email okay so education at cbngroup.com please send me emails there so whoever put the emails in our message box here uh, please send them to this email okay because it's going to come directly to me and I'll be able to assist you and get all the marketing material you need so it's education if you can see it at the bottom here education at cbngroup.com Okay, and then you can please, if you like, like our preempt disinfectants, follow the Instagram. It's not ours, it's from Virox. 
Follow premium disinfectants because they put really good posts up there that could be useful for you as well to repost, to regram, to 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 share in your salon. But um, I hope this was, you know, we try to keep it a little bit brief. We just wanted to um, help out and see that there is a product out there that you can use, which is a Refectus, sorry, not Refectus, which is preempt RTU. Um, and that you will be able to fight this um, COVID-19 and we can be able to stay unified as a community and industry and get back to work um, hopefully soon, soon, right? So do you have any questions re maybe about the product? I can spend a minute or two about um, preempt RTU. Is there any questions you might have about it? Um, if not, if you need marketing material, once again, you can email me at education at cbungroup.com. But I'll wait and see because I think somebody is trying to type something. Let's see if I'm missing these. Wait, how do you say scroll down, Tasha? <laughs> Why is your thing so? Yeah. Well, why isn't it coming down? Oh. Oh, I missed all these questions. Wow. Okay. Give me one second. Um, here, you do it for me and go back up. Natasha, you can do it better for me. I just got to see the questions. I missed a whole bunch, so let me answer them. It wasn't going down. Okay, go down. Go down, go down. Great. Oh, wait. Up. Can you use a UV sterilizer in addition to pre MCS20? Oh, I'll give you that one, perfect. So a UV sterilizer is not approved by Health Canada to sterilize. They are just a method, uh, it's to keep your sterilized tools. Um, so don't use that to go straight and, and sterilize. It's good to, after you've done doing your cleaning and sterilizing your tools and you've dried them, you can place them in a UV sterilizer to keep them uh, from getting cross-contaminated to your next customer, but it does not sterilize, okay? So it is an addition to your CS20, meaning that it's to store, okay? Oh, 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 feedback form. I'm going to put, while I'm answering the questions i'm posting up uh, a feedback form uh, can you see this it, if you can please fill it out it gives us um knowledge of knowing um what we need to improve what we can do what can we can do in the future for webinars because i want to hold more of these for april um so please 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 do this feed this feedback uh form for me um i get to know as well as a presenter what i can improve on myself as well uh, we'd be greatly appreciated. So while I'm answering questions, if you can fill this um, survey, that would be awesome. So let me read the next question. Um, I think my initial slide said that the COVID-19 incubation period was 40, 28 days. The one said the incubation period means the time between catching the virus. Oh, I lost my own. Catching the virus and beginning to have symptoms of the disease. Most estimate that the incubation period for COVID-19 ranges from 1 to 14 days almost. Five days. Yeah, all this information that we grabbed as well is from the WHO. So it could have changed from the last time. So always keep active. Um, and I see you you posted a link, which is awesome. Always keep active with what's going on there and what changes have been made, made as well. So thank you for uh, saying that. Um, about how long the virus stays on surface, success, et cetera. Yeah, we did catch this information from who? So maybe there has been some changes since the last time. Uh, thank you, Donna. Thank you for watching. Let me see if there's any more questions. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Heather. Thank you, Vera. Larissa. Lanny, can you order this online at Beauty Depot? I think a lot of people are doing um, online and drop shipping. So just check in with your local distributor. Okay, just uh, give them a shout and find find out if they if they can do that. I know a lot of people are going online now. Uh, thank you, Mary, um, Catherine. What about CS20? Um, this webinar wasn't to mention about CS20 because it's uh, it's a, it's talking about surfaces about uh, killing that virus on surfaces, but. Um, for your CS20, you're using that on your implements, on your tools, on your stainless steel tools to uh, sterilize and be able to kill everything, including spores and those um, uh, non-envelope viruses. So um, we can do, if you fill in that survey, that feedback form, and if it's something that you want us to do a webinar on, on, on tools and disinfection, let me know in that, in that survey because by all means, I would love to do a webinar on that as well. Okay, 
thank you so much, uh, Benedetta, Benedetta. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, JC. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you. Thank you for everybody's feedback. Uh, Corey, can we use CS20 and dilute to zero? No, no dilution for CS20, please. I have asked this question to Virox. There's no um, stability testings on this, as it's, it's solely meant to be used to sterilize. So please, no diluting. Um, uh, how do we? How do you use the wipes, Marilyn? So the wipes. <clears throat> what you do is uh, they're pretty saturated. They're pretty thick. Uh, you can use the one side of the wipe to do like your little scrubbing action and, and you know, remove any soil. And then you could take a dry paper towel and wipe that section and then flip it on the other side of the wipe and saturate that surface, wet it, and then leave it wet for three minutes. So simple how you use the wipes. It's just an easier, it's just a, you can probably say it's a faster method using the wipes than the spray, more controlled where yours because the spray can go over, but the spray at the end gets, is more cost effective, but the wipes are more handy depending where you are. Uh, also, I'm mobile, so I like to use the wipes, carry the wipes with me. Thank you, Rodena. Wanda, Beauty Depot does door pickup as well. Good to know that, there we go. So that was a question for the person who had asked about uh, Beauty Depot. Uh, Rachel, thank you, Rachel. Larissa, does CS20 have to be diluted? No, no, CS20 is ready to use. Please do not dilute. There is no stability testings of what it can do. Uh, it's meant to be a chemo sterilant and be used straight, okay? Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you, I appreciate that you thought it was a great training, Wanda. I, it's good for me to know as well. Um, Larissa, never mind. You just answered my question. Okay, you're welcome, Larissa. I hope I did. <laughs> um, Harja, can you order this online at Pro Beauty Group? Uh, once again, I think a lot of people are um, going online, Harja. So just check their website and just make sure and see what they have implemented now because of um, stores have being closed down. Um, so please check with them. If if you can't get any answers after you message them, email me at the email that I have there and um, I can help you further, okay? Daniela, if we're using the RTU spray, do we need to respray it during the three minutes? How fast does it evaporate? So in that testing, in that video that they did, the surface stayed wet, wet for the three minutes, maybe towards like two, 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 a second or two before I reached three minutes, it started to evaporate. It stays pretty, pretty, um, uh, moist, pretty wet, right? So if you start seeing in other areas that it's starting to um, evaporate and you're there, you can um, respray it. But in my expertise and when I'm cleaning around and it stays uh, wet for me for my three minutes contact time, okay? Um, it doesn't evaporate within that three minutes, so you should be good. Uh, Chantel, thank you, thank you. I'm glad it was very informative. Rupinder, thank you, thank you so much as well. Uh, thank you, Leona. Um, Lanny, thank you. Thank you for for saying it's a great training. Once again, it helps me a lot. Hardra, can you use the R2 spray with the wipes to prolong use of wipes? No, because uh, once that wipe has been cross-contaminated, it has to be um, thrown away. So I wouldn't reuse that wipe uh, and respray it throughout the day to to reuse it. It's in, that's not proper um, uh, protocols. So uh, it it would so it would it wouldn't um, be effective. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm just trying to go through because we have to shut this down in one minute. Uh, Larissa, I thought I seen somewhere that we can get a certificate for attending the seminar, but I could be wrong. Uh, maybe it's other webinars that you, you might have joined. There's no certificate in this one, but in your feedback, if this is something that people really want, I can think about it, about doing that for the future webinars. Uh, this was more of an uh, educational training as in knowing how to use the product um, properly with the COVID-19, so it's more to get people aware how seriousness serious this virus is and what can we do. But uh, for future webinars, let me know, fill in the survey and give me those feedbacks, okay? Uh, Corey, if you if you soap water wash the surface, does it need to be dry before? Yes, you need to remove that soap and water with a dry paper towel before you use the RTU. But the good thing is you don't need to use soap and water when you're using RTU because it has surfactants in it and works as a cleaner. So you just use the RTU straight, okay? 
Uh, this was great. Thank you. Thank you for your time as well, Carrie, and stay safe as well. Everyone stay safe. Wanda, Rhonda, everybody stay safe. Um, I'm going to have to cut this off now. I know there's so many questions. I'm so sorry. Um, I hope the, the, the uh, Benedetta, the supplier should restock. We're trying to get our our shipment in from the manufacturer as well to be able to give it to distributors. So just keep on checking in with the distributors that they got their shipment in. Um, okay, so give me, Daniela, give me that feedback in your, in the uh, survey, because we do offer, uh, through distributors, we do offer full classes. Uh, I know now because we're all shut down, we might have to think about doing an online course. So for sure, I'm going to look at doing that and being able to provide um, a certificate as well for the whole entire preempt line. Okay, so just give me that as a feedback so I have it in my emails. Uh, can you use HLD5 as a surface disinfectant? Nope, it's pretty harsh. The AHP, not harsh, meaning it's strong. The level of the AHP in there, it's meant to uh, be used on stainless steel, like hard metals and hard uh, plastics, which what will happen, it could deteriorate the, your surface. So don't use that, use RTU. You're, you're good with RTU. Can post your email again? I lost it. Oh, um, do you want to type it in for me? Sorry. We're going to post the email. Thank you, Debbie. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I got posted in you, the email. You can see it. Oh, is this it? We're down with all the... Oh. Yep, yep, that's it. Thank you, Debbie. Thank you, everybody. So use this email. Hi, Tina. I will. I will. That's why please fill up, fill up that feedback form because now that I'm seeing that a lot of people really want more of these online courses, I, I will look into it and try and create one, especially for like the whole product line. Okay. I appreciate that. And uh, I posted again the email. So I hope I hear from everybody and we're going to have to let go now, but stay safe, practice proper protocols, keep infection control top notch, and I will see you guys soon again. Thank you.